whole new series here based on your new suggestions. This one is actually a brand new suggestion and when I was reading the information I picked this one because it is pretty much the epitome of an urban legend. Who knows when it started? Who knows who it involves specifically like in terms of a name? There's not even a location to try to base this urban legend on. But yes, uh, when I was reading this info it just perfectly falls under that category. To this day though, it, it's a very popular one. I have heard of this one before. That's another reason that I picked it because who knows how far back I remember reading about this and it was so fascinating like almost in a full circle type of world to come across this urban legend again today reading this uh, information for the series so uh, and if you have heard it it's gonna be a short one but if you haven't then at least I'll provide a good brief bit of info associated with this urban legend it's known as the woman in gray I can probably see some of you already shaking your head yes like in terms of hearing this urban legend before but let's go ahead and let's talk about all the short but fascinating info associated with this urban legend. So who is this woman in gray? Well, this is a story that again remains mystery. There's no known date on when it first started. The closest that we have in terms of an approximation happens to do with the fact that it was involving a small shop. So when I hear those words small shop, I'm thinking of a more modern time, like at least 1950s and above. Something in the sense that you would picture a place where you can go in, you'll see a bunch of small, you know, a small store with a bunch of stuff to buy. Something at least to have a frozen aisle or cold uh, drink aisle. Something along those lines. And in other words, nothing in the far, you know, old west where nothing like that would really exist. So that's at least some base of a timeline for this. And then where it lo it was located, no one knows two involving this urban legend the most common cited example is a so-called midwestern state so you know this could be within the rust belt or this could be some other place who knows but that seems to be the most common theory and then who it involved no one knows either because again there's nothing in terms of names specifically not even ages associated with all the parties involved so but there, there's, there's nothing in terms of who this might be. But as far as who this, uh, this, 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 this person was involving here, this woman in gray, here's how the urban legend goes. So sometime within a past period, again, there was a small shop located in a Midwestern state. Whether these two young men who were in the shop were the owners or were more likely the workers, who knows as well. I'm citing more on the latter side. It was probably just a nighttime uh, shift, and then these men were the ones that were happening, to, you know, to be working during that time period. Because the fact that they were apparently quite bored during their shift kind of tells me that this is less activity uh, in terms of their shift, which equals a nighttime type of environment because naturally there'll just be less clients to, to deal with on a nighttime shift but for whatever reason these two young men were working in that shop during that time period and they noticed a customer come in um, it would stand out because again this is probably something where it's rare during that nighttime to have many customers they saw what looked like a small woman in a gray dress, hence the name of the woman in gray urban legend because it all has to do with the dress that she had. No mention though if this dress was something like modern times, at least according to the story, or something else where it was more along the lines of, of, of a period dress, like an older dress. It was just simply mentioned as a gray dress. But this woman looked real at least real enough so that the men didn't you know obviously turn white seeing like let's say a ghost or something else like that no in this case they just saw a small woman in gray she walked over straight to the dairy products right there in the store maybe even in the cold aisle uh, you know how you have those nice little places there where you can buy the cold drinks all ready to go she took a bottle of milk from that location and then the men thinking that naturally she'll just walk up 
up to the register or the area to pay for this bottle of milk. They were all expecting that, but much to their surprise, they saw her just walk straight out of the store. She never even acknowledged them throughout the entire short, brief encounter. Didn't acknowledge them once when she walked in once when she took the bottle of milk or even once when she walked straight out of the store obviously they were not happy about this you know nobody's gonna steal from that store just walking out like that so they ran out after her but they realized that she was gone when I was reading this story again it, it reminded me of the sense that imagine this store nothing really is surrounding it at least in in terms of places that she could just easily disappear into something along the lines of let's say hiding around another store corner something like that no in this case i imagine that it's more isolated because then i go back to that phrase that they were quite bored during their shift so it just draws me to the idea again that they're in a more of a remote location but yeah she was nowhere to be found so cut to a little bit later another day it seems that's when the men were on the same shift and here lo and behold this woman in a gray dress walks in again and so they saw her and then they're thinking that maybe she wouldn't dare do something like this again they saw her get the bottle of milk and then she left one more time so this was crazy because here was a second encounter with something like this happening I don't know if this happened like the next day I think so because according to the end of the urban legend you'll see why it takes place over a couple of days but yes they were shocked that she did something like this again they ran out one more time but she was gone they couldn't find her that second time so finally cut to a different time period and then that's when this very same thing happened uh, this time though they were prepared like whenever they s would see this woman in a gray dress yet again they knew based on a pattern what she was going to do next but to their surprise when she walked in and she went straight towards the milk bottle area they went as quickly as possible to try to confront her to make sure that hey you know you just stole twice before it's not going to happen a third time but to their surprise it seemed like she moved really quick when I was reading this info imagine something like uh, fast forward type speed where you wouldn't presume that that this that the small woman in a gray dress could move that fast but apparently she did so it caught them completely off guard and she ran out one more time with another milk bottle but they ran out as quickly as well like they this time because they were prepared ahead of time they gave them a brief advantage to be able to close the distance between her running out of the store and them running out of the store in a quicker fashion. So they ran out and then they saw where she was going. And, and it must have been again that she was running really quick because somewhere close to the, uh, to the convenience store there was a dirt road and they saw her go in there. And so whenever that happened, they quickly crossed over. I don't know if they were necessarily thinking again about the store afterward because presumably both of them went that would leave nobody there left in the store what's going to happen to the store you know what I mean so the, uh, I wonder what the, what they were thinking when they did something like that it's just a milk bottle at the end of the day it's not going to make or break the store even if it is selling something but them running out of the store that'll cause problems thereafter but in any case the way the urban legend goes they went across that dirt road right after her and then that's when they came across a cemetery and uh, apparently Apparently this cemetery it was one that they've never ever seen before and as they were crossing this cemetery this little makeshift cemetery that's when they heard the sound the unrecognized you know the immediately uh, uh, in this case um, recognizable sound of a crying infant and it seemed to come like an epicenter of it came from a gravestone and that's when they went to it I don't know why uh, the urban legend the, the, these two men decided to do what they did next, but they thought to themselves, let's 
pretty much dig up that gravestone and see where this noise is coming from. Um, uh, it seems like that's at least what their mindset was. Somehow they found shovels right nearby. Maybe they had some right in the store and they um, were able to run back, get those and come back. Maybe they did it because they thought it was an emergency. Hearing that crying infant and then thinking to themselves, you know, this is really real. They are absolutely hearing a young baby, in this case crying, needing some kind of help. Maybe that was more in the lines of their, their emergency mindset. But yes, they dug up as quickly as they could. They found the coffin within that, that, that particular gravestone. And when they opened the lid, they saw, in this case, the woman in gray. But this was clearly, though, a corpse. This was a corpse who knows how long dead within the gravestone. But more importantly, they saw a baby, a live baby, an actual crying baby within the gravestones. Uh, so somehow this baby, I don't know how it occurred, who knows why it occurred or when it occurred at least. But somehow, the way the servant legend goes, this crying baby was within that gravestone and alongside the baby baby were these three empty milk bottles the very same ones in this case that the woman in gray stole from that convenience store during the past three days so it seems like the uh, main uh, theme of this story is this woman whoever she was was the mother of this baby somehow it was buried alive with her he or she whoever this baby was was buried alive with her and when that happened this woman the spirit the ghost of her Whoever that is decided to try to call for attention and with the convenience store being the nearest one around she made her presence known enough times to get those men across the street to try to find her child to save her child in other words and of course the quickest way to do that is to steal something so that way they could run out and then try to find her isn't that kind of eerie it's a weird story um, especially the payoff at the end when it came to the main reason why uh, she was stealing those milk bottles but yes I'm sure you've heard of this urban legend before if you haven't at least you you've heard of it now it's one of those things again that it just it just sticks with you after a while so if this is the first time you've ever heard of it you'll probably just like me have it ingrained with you who knows how long later and then when you come across it, you'll realize again that, yes, this was an urban legend that you heard who knows how far back. So what do you guys think of this urban legend? It's an oldie but a classic. It's almost on the lines of the hitchhiker type urban legend, uh, one of my older urban legend videos. But if anybody has any more info, something I might have missed, maybe something on the lines of a location, a name, maybe even where the cemetery is, something like that, it'd be great to hear. There's bound to be someplace in the US that would claim the origin of this urban legend like where the cemetery was where the convenience store was so if anybody has that info that'd be really great to hear too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care